to the Fantasy Source Baseball Podcast. My name is David Ayer, and I'm sitting here with George Winkler. And today we are going to be previewing the second baseman. Last time we talked about first baseman. Now we move over a little bit into the dia, or not the dia, the the diamond. And we're going to talk about a position that has it's not nearly as deep as first base, but does have some super high end guys that maybe you may consider in the first round. Absolutely. This isn't a position that's boring anymore. In fact, you can get more than just speed and average at this position. You can get power with guys like Dan Ugla, Robinson Cano, Chase Utley right off the top. Now, by boring, you mean the Ryan Sandberg era when there was one second baseman and then the many trios of the world are out there, right? I, that's exactly what I'm saying. In fact, I think this position's deeper than shortstop, um, believe it or not. So I think you could see more guys go earlier at second base than shortstop. All right, so who are those guys that you would put at the very top of the list? I know that there are two guys that are being named uh, throughout the blogosphere, throughout the, throughout the fantasy baseball world, as being the consensus top two second baseman. I want to know who you put first, Chase Utley or Robinson Cano? Well, if it's a keeper league, I'm going to go with Cano because he's nearly four years younger. But in non-keeper setups, especially rotisserie leagues, it gets a lot tougher of a call. These guys are going to give you comparable stuff in runs, homers, and RBIs, where the difference comes down to is steals and batting average. And to me, Utley's steals are still just a little bit more important than um, Cano's batting average. Now, how much weight do you put on the injury factor and things like that? Because Utley notoriously has missed a good chunk of time in the... Uh, some, not necessarily immediately or like with a nagging chronic stuff, but he has missed a lot of time over the past few years. Well, and I think that's the thing with Utley. You know, he has missed the time, and that is scaring people off from him. But I'm saying if he stays healthy, all things equal, <laughs> they, they both play all season long, I think Utley's the guy to go with. Do your due diligence on that one. Like if Utley starts talking about complaining about some sort of nagging injury or something in, in spring training – that you need to take it, you need to take that into account a little bit more than you would with someone who might be 24 years old or something like that. Yeah, I mean, and again, it's razor thin here. I, I like Utley, but I'm not like I like Utley. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a razor thin. I hope I hope right that here. I hope that the podcast audience actually visualizes you shaking your fist the way that you did there. Uh, after those top two guys, who do you see as being the next level down? Uh, and in what rounds would you start looking for those guys? I like Dan Ugla. I mean, this guy hits 30 bombs every mm -hmm. year, and that's really rare at any position mm -hmm. these days. So he goes over to the Braves. I think he'll be fine. He has good numbers at Turner Field, if you're worried about that. And he's a guy you look for in the third round. Are you worried about his batting average at all? And that you, you just take that with it. Oh, I mean, you, you take the good with the bad. You, you take the good with the bad. There, um, you know, you the ideal is to get a five category guy like Utley, but you know, in the third round, you get you take the good with the bad. Like but you said. two two guys that are going to be talked about a lot in this spring training uh, as. Again, in that category, and some people might even think to themselves and talk themselves into picking them ahead of someone like Udla, who who has a potential to bat 230 in a given season, uh, are Ricky Weeks and Kelly Johnson. So I was hoping you could talk a little bit about what those two guys bring to the table. Well, yeah, Weeks is the only second baseman I have projected to get 20 homers and 20 steals this year, and that's that's pretty good. Yeah. But but here's the guy who who's only done it for one year. And uh, he led second baseman being hit by pitches. So, you know, an injury-prone guy getting hit by pitches, striking out 184 times. Eh, be careful about how far you reach for Ricky Weeks. All right. And then Kelly Johnson, what are your thoughts on him? Kelly Johnson, again, I'm a little cautious here. You I mean, know? 27 home runs last year. I know, 26 home runs. 26, 26, 26 I'm Something sorry. Like 26 home runs. I believe 20 of them came at Chase Field. <laughs> so, but they still count. They still count unless you're in a head-to-head -head league and the D-backs <laughs> are on a road trip, and then it becomes a problem. So... Kelly Johnson, a little reliant on that home field advantage. You know, I, I kind of like my guys to be a little bit more consistent overall. Oh, okay. Well, I see you on the next, uh, next list that you have there, the undervalued guys, and I'm actually kind of shocked that we haven't mentioned him yet. Dustin Pedroia, American League MVP of just a couple years ago. Uh, how do you see his value being... Uh, in the in the fantasy baseball world this upcoming year? Well, I mean, the whole reason his numbers were down last year were because of the foot injury. And now that he's, 
he's back and healthy, and if he continues to look that way in spring training, you know, go for it. I, I would go for him as early as the second or third round, and certainly if he lasts beyond that, you're looking at a good value pick there. I also see you have Gordon Beckham listed there. Uh, where he, he had that amazing rookie season, as if I recall correctly. He just burst onto the scene, was hitting like gangbusters, and then just totally fell off, got sent back down to the minors. Uh, it's very bipolar. How do you see him performing this season? Well, you know, now he's, now he's undervalued. After being <laughs> overvalued to the max next year, now the counterintuitive thinking is, let's go grab him this year because... Yeah, two years ago he showed enormous power, and the guy's only 24 years old, so you're looking at a middle infield guy that you could draft on your bench or in the late rounds that could give you 15 homers, 80 runs, 80 RBIs. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it was, what, two years ago that he was an uber prospect. Last year isn't necessary. I mean, some of that shine's gone, but last year it shouldn't wipe off all of that shine. I'm a big big guy who scrounges for the prospects after he's been hot. <laughs> I mean, I love picking up those guys that people get down on. Um, you know, at another position, I think Jay Bruce might be a guy mm -hmm. this year. All right, George. Well, thanks for talking to us about second baseman. And next week, who are we talking about? We're talking about shortstops, but before that, you'll get to talk to Brad about third baseman. Nice, nice. All right, guys. So keep track of that. Look for the podcast. Thanks for joining us, George. Thanks for having me.